Peaks Tech Tuesday. This week we're going to discuss fuel delivery systems and how to get the peak performance and reliability out of each one. Prior to getting started, I want to bring up safety first. Be sure to work in a well-ventilated area and make sure that you're working on completely cleaned out tanks free of any type of fuel or fuel vapor. Now let's talk about the importance of consistent fuel pressure. Failure to maintain constant fuel pressure to the EFI system will result in poor starting, hesitation, stumbling, overall poor engine performance, and it doesn't even have to do with the fuel injection itself, it just all comes back to inconsistent fuel pressure. The reason for this is EFI requires the fuel pressure to force fuel through the injector and into the engine. With inconsistent fuel pressure, the computer doesn't know the proper amount of fuel that is being delivered into the motor. Now getting that fuel up to your fuel injection system, that takes your fuel lines. There are some proper fuel lines to be using and some to avoid. The ones to avoid are low pressure fuel lines that you're using currently with the carburetor. These will not be able to handle the 45 PSI or more of fuel injection. Other lines to avoid are aluminum lines. Aluminum lines are usually rated at 25 PSI or less and cannot handle the fuel pulsation of the fuel pump. This would lead to cracking and fuel leaks. Use EFI rated fuel lines such as PTFE stainless steel braided line, fuel injection hose, or stainless steel hard line. Now as far as routing your fuel lines, you want to focus on maintaining a clean route up to your fuel injection system, avoiding kinks, moving objects, or hot objects. If you get a fuel line too hot, you have the risk of boiling the fuel or melting the fuel line. If it's next to something that's sharp or moving, you can chafe the line or even crack the line. Now once you got your fuel lines routed, we got to find a location for that fuel filter. All of Phytech EFI's fuel filters are serviceable, so you can take them out and clean the element and put them back in. Because of this, you want to put them in a location you can access them easy. Sometimes that's up underneath the vehicle, up against the frame rail. Other times it could be in the engine compartment. When choosing how to wire up your fuel pump, first look at how many amps the pump draws. Phytech EFI systems will handle a pump that draws up to 20 amps on all systems, but if you're using a pump that draws more than that, you may want to use a relay. When using a relay, you want to get power directly from the battery to feed the fuel pump, and then you'll use the EFI system to trigger the relay on and off. If you have a Phytech EFI system such as the GO EFI 4, it has pulse width modulation built into it. You could run the power for the pump directly from the EFI system when using a fuel pump less than 15 amps. The first fuel delivery system we're going to talk about is the inline fuel pump. The inline fuel pump kits that we provide have 40 feet of fuel line, a fuel pump, and a couple of filters. When using an inline fuel pump, it is important to remember that electric fuel pumps push fuel. They do not pull. So when mounting an electric fuel pump, you want to get it as close to the fuel source as possible. Another thing to do is to make sure the fuel pump is at or below the bottom level of the gas tank so you can create a siphon flow down to the fuel pump to ensure fuel is supplied constantly. If the fuel pump is not getting adequate fuel flow, it's going to cavitate. A way to tell if a pump's cavitating is the hum of the pump is going to start changing erratically. This is from air being sucked into the fuel pump and not being able to be pumped out of the pump because it's designed to push fuel, not air. If you're going to use the existing fuel pickup for your inline fuel pump, be sure that it's in good condition. If there's anything restricting flow, you will end up with pump cavitation. It is a good idea to step up the line size. Some vehicles have a big block version which moves up to a half inch inner diameter fuel pickup. You could also modify an existing pickup by adding a new hose into it that's of a larger diameter. When returning fuel back to the gas tank, be sure to return the fuel away from the pickup. If fuel splashes down above the pickup, you're going to create air bubbles which can be sucked up into the fuel pump. 
To avoid this, you may consider going into the filler neck if you have a port for it, or return off to the side of the tank, not directly over the fuel pickup itself. Next, let's talk about the force fuel delivery systems. These systems allow the use of a mechanical fuel pump or a carbureted electric fuel pump to send fuel to them. Inside, there's an EFI high pressure in-tank fuel pump that boosts fuel pressure up for the fuel injection system. When mounting one of these things, you want to consider what fuel pump you're going to use to transfer fuel to it. If it's a mechanical fuel pump, you may consider mounting this somewhere in the engine compartment close to that mechanical fuel pump for easy plumbing. If you're using an electric fuel pump back at the gas tank, you may consider mounting the force fuel underneath the vehicle or even in the trunk. Once you've decided where you want to mount the force fuel, decide where you want to locate the bracket. The bracket mounts to the bottom and the back of it for multiple mounting options. The force fuel can be mounted straight up, on its back, on its side, or anywhere in between. The most important step is to make sure that the highest port is the return port back to the gas tank. The way that the force fuel works is that you send fuel in one side. Once it fills up, it returns excess fuel back to the tank. If you get an air bubble into it, the highest point is where the air is going to go, and the air is going to be vented back to the gas tank through the return line. With the kit, you get five feet of fuel line, fittings, filter, and a special item called a return bunk. That return bunk allows you to run a return line from the forest fuel back to the gas tank without heavy modifications of that gas tank. The most common issue with the installation of the forest fuel is inadequate fuel being fed to the forest fuel module itself. If the transfer pump does not provide enough fuel to fill up the forest fuel, it'll drain out and there'll be no fuel for the pump inside to pump forward. Every force fuel system comes with a fuel pressure gauge, so be sure to have this in a visible location so you can see fuel pressure at any given point in time. If the force fuel does not have enough fuel in it, you'll lose fuel pressure and it will read zero on the gauge. Our final and preferred option is to go to an in-tank fuel pump module. These can be retrofitted to any gas tank or it can be mounted directly into a tank's incorporated gas tank itself. A really important step of mounting the in-tank modules is to measure how deep the pump needs to go into the gas tank. It is really important to make sure that the tank sock sits at least a quarter to three-eighths of an inch off the bottom of the gas tank. Not enough clearance will jam the filter into the bottom of the tank and the pump cannot suck up fuel. Too much clearance and you won't be able to consume all the fuel in the gas tank. If retrofitting an existing gas tank, try to locate the module in the exact center of the gas tank for best performance. A larger tank sock is supplied with the pump. That one would be the preferred one with an open tank design. If you mount the in-tank module off to the side, when you turn the vehicle, fuel's gonna slosh away from the pickup and starving the pump for fuel. When using with the tank's incorporated tank, there is a bucket that holds fuel directly next to the tank. There's also the return line off of the module that returns fuel back into that bucket. This ensures that the fuel pump has adequate fuel all the time. In-tank fuel pumps are going to be your best option when doing an EFI conversion. It all comes back to the electric fuel pump pushing fuel. You can't get closer to the fuel than being in it. The biggest benefits of the in-tank fuel pump is that you're getting fuel directly from the source to feed the fuel pump, so it's not drawing anything. It's also cooled and quieted by the fuel to help for a longer operation without any noise inside the vehicle. These are all reasons why we prefer the in-tank fuel pump. Hopefully that answers any questions or issues that you had with your fuel delivery system. If you have any additional questions or issues that you want to talk about, please comment below and we'll answer them.